And whenever y'all are ready. Amanda, would you talk a little bit about the uh, the feeling of the team coming out of the regional going into this? Uh, I know you, Florida State holds a special place for some of the older players on the team uh, as far as an opponent in the Super Regionals. Yeah, I mean, um, coming out of the regionals, we just start picking up momentum and continuing to build on, build on that every single day at practice. So we're ready to go and ready to play Florida State and ready to play some LSU softball. What about playing Florida State after the you, you've got a history with them? Uh, what does that mean to you? Um, I mean, this will be my third out of four times in postseason playing them in a super regional. So just kind of funny, but again, doesn't matter who the competition is. We're just going to go out there and play our our game and make sure that we do what we're supposed to do. Amanda, what do you remember about that 2018 doubleheader? It seemed like it was the longest day you guys must have had. Can you just take me back to that and describe what that doubleheader was like and how you guys, if it comes down to that again, staying composed in, in supers? Yeah, I mean, we're um, well practiced with doubleheaders this season. So if it does come to that, I know we'll be prepared. but. Yeah, just thinking back, I actually forgot it was a doubleheader um, in 2018 until I started thinking about it a couple of days ago. So um, just knowing that it's going to be hard. Um, Super Regionals is always hard. It was hard back then, and it's going to be hard this weekend. But it's just a matter of who's prepared more. And um, we've definitely prepared this week, and I think we're ready to go. How much different do they look from, I mean, if you can remember back to 2018, to just the team they are now and uh, maybe some challenges they present this year? I mean, they're still a solid team. Obviously, they're in a super regional. They have solid pitching, solid defense, and solid hitting. So um, they look very similar to how they were a couple of years ago. They're solid all around. So it's definitely going to be good competition and a good three-game series. What have you all seen from Catherine Sandercock in the circle, and how do you all plan on going about that? Um, just go up there and making sure we hit hitters pitches and not worrying about what she's throwing or not worrying about the, the fluff, as we call it, um, that they throw. Just worrying about what we can hit well and how we're going to attack her, not how she's going to attack us. Amanda, I apologize if you've answered this already, but do you kind of remember when you walked in, you know, back when you were a freshman into a super regional for the first time and the emotions of being on that stage versus now, I mean, being in a super regional is kind of an old hat for you at this point, but is there any different emotions? Do you feel like you handle things a little bit better, maybe prepare better? Um, I definitely think I do being, um, this being my fourth one, the nerves kind of go away and, and stuff like that. My freshman year, I was a little more nervous of having to, um, prepare and perform, but this year I'm just going out there and having fun. And that's what I plan to do this weekend. So I definitely think that's the big difference from me now and me a couple years ago as a freshman. How hard is it to just treat these games like they're just another game? I mean, I know the implications are a lot more and a lot bigger, but how do you turn your brain off to not recognize all the exterior stuff? Um, playing in the SEC has a big part of that. It's a great competition every single week. So those games and that tough competition definitely prepares you for weekends like this. So it doesn't feel much different as a normal SEC weekend. Um, it's going to be great competition this weekend as it has been this entire season. We're definitely battle tested. Do you think as a whole right now with Shelby seeing the ball well, Georgia had a, a lot of big hits. Uh, in the regional, do you think the lineup is about as balanced as it's been all year, top to bottom, with everyone producing? Yeah, we're doing great right now. Um, I said earlier that we have great momentum coming out of the regional. We're um, producing one through nine in the lineup, so that's going to be a great, great momentum and um, great game changer th um, for this weekend. Are you Amanda, when it comes to um, who Coach Tarina decides to pitch, do you find that out sometimes at the last second as a team? <laughs> yeah, we kind of find out when we hear the lineup um, who pitches. So I know, though, whoever's thrown out there, they're going to get the job done. We have um, a lot of great pitchers, and they are fantastic with what they do. So I know that no matter who's out there, they're going to get the job done. Do you think Coach Tarina kind of enjoys that aspect of coaching? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, surprise, this is who's on the mound. <laughs> yeah, probably. Gotcha.
how are you feeling about um, some of your final games at Tiger Park? Um, I'm just embracing it every single day, even with practices. I'm just embracing it and really taking in the how lucky I am to be at a university like this and at a park like this. Just taking it in, not trying to think like, oh, this could be my last game or my last practice. Just really trying to have fun every single day with my teammates and at this amazing facility that I get to practice at every day. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, guys. We got Shelby Sinceri, whenever y'all are ready. Shelby, I just wanted to ask, um, as pitchers, how last second is it sometimes when you find out you're going to be the starter? Um, most of the time, it's 30 to 45 minutes before the game, give or take. Normally, we do our hitting rotation, and we do like our pregame hitting, and we stretch. And then after we stretch, that's kind of when we figure out who um, is throwing. So um, it kind of depends on the pitcher who's starting also because some of us take less time to warm up than others. Um, but it's about 30 to 45 minutes, give or take the game. And if coach, what she's wanting and what she's deciding. Does that keep you and the pitching staff focused? I mean, like in baseball, those guys know, like when they go to sleep that night, hey, I'm starting tomorrow. Does that kind of keep everyone, hey, guessing and on edge? I think it does. I think it's helpful for us. Um, I think sometimes when we have so long to prepare and we like know ahead of time that we can kind of get in our heads and get in the way of just going out there and doing what we're supposed to do and doing what we're good at. So I think that's one of the things that they're one of the reasons why coach doesn't tell us ahead of time and she tells us like right before the game. So we kind of just can go out there and just focus on doing what we're good at and focus on our stuff. And we don't have time to like think about it and process it and try to be perfect. Shelby, how, how dangerous is this lineup when it's balanced to like it is right now? Um, I think it's, I mean, we have a solid lineup one through nine, um, even with the girls that are, um, our pinch hitters that come in. I just think that we have um, several people in our on our offense that are just big hitters and powerful. And we also have with Aaliyah and Sierra in the lineup. It, it's just, it's an unstoppable lineup when we're all balanced and we're all on. Um, and I think that we saw that in regionals this past weekend. Uh, when we were on, it was, I mean, we put up runs, we put up hits and it was like there was nothing that they could throw us that was getting us out. And so I think that's a really good thing going into this weekend. It's um, a really positive aspect that we have going for us. It's just when we're all on, we just work really well together and we just um, like can just balance each other out. I know that 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 second game or or so. uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I knew that Georgia and you hit those balls hard, the home runs opposite field. Was there, was there like a conscious effort to, you know, during the week of preparation, hitting balls the other way, or did that, was that just happenstance? Um, I think it's a combination of both. I think um, that's one thing that we're good at is being able to hit both sides of the field, um, go oppo or turn on a ball. Um, I think our biggest concentration is just barreling things up really and just getting the barrel to it and trying to hit stuff um, on a line and not so much in the air. And I think that just when the the focus on that has helped us be able to hit more balls opposite side. Shelby, if you can go back to 2018, what do you remember about that double header at Florida State? Um, that was a long time ago. Um, I just remember that was my first super that I ever I had ever played in. And um, I remember being in the lineup and I remember being very nervous um, because that was the first time and being a freshman in the lineup. um, I was one of the only freshmen in the lineup. So um, I remember just being nervous and just but being very excited. It was a very exciting moment, something that I had always dreamed about doing and working for. So um, it was a very long day, but it was very exciting. And I'm looking forward to this weekend and really just being able to be at home in front of our fans and just play LSU softball again. How do you feel going into it now? Have have the nerves a little bit subsided since you've been there before? And I also wanted to ask you too, if you can just update us on how you're feeling um, in the walking boot. Um, I'm doing good. I'm okay. We're taking it one day at a time. Um, 
yes, the nerves have gone, you know, like since being able to pitch in a super regional at Minnesota, um, I've kind of done it all. I've been able to hit, I've been able to pitch. And so those nerves are kind of, I know what to expect. I know being older now, I kind of know how to deal with the nerves and deal with the, the what's going to come. And so it's definitely a different feeling. Um, kind of like Amanda said, we're just being older now, it just is easy to embrace where we're at and just enjoy each and every moment just to be where our feet are. And I think that's one of the most important things that we can do. What did you think of Ali Component's performance against ULL um, from last weekend? And how do y'all plan on carrying that momentum into the circle? She did a phenomenal job. You know, she stepped up. She stepped up several times this year when we needed her. Um, and I just think that was just another performance where she just stepped up and she knew what she needed to do. And she went out there and she threw her stuff and she was confident. And I think that's a very good thing going into this weekend to know that we have her. Um, I mean, we have a, a big pitching staff and we have a, a deep pitching staff and we all complement each other really well. Um, and so I think that just her being able to go out and have confidence and just give us a performance that we needed is um, a really big thing going into this weekend. Uh, we also have MB and Shelby Wickersham who can come out and do stuff. So I just think it's, it's, a, it's gonna be exciting this weekend to see what our pitching staff does. Good. Thank you, Sheldon. Hey, everybody. Hi, Beth. Um, Beth, it looks like um, Florida State uh, plays a little more small ball maybe than y'all do. Uh, is that the big challenge? Uh, they, got a, they look like they got a lot of speed. They like to run. Um, is that what you see? I think the challenge is there. I think the challenge is in their experience. They have, you know, kids that have won a national championship on this team. I think challenges in their pitching staff. I think there's a few challenges throughout, um, you know, with what they bring to us. Beth, is this about as balanced as, as this lineup can be? I mean, I know there have been points where one through nine have been really good, but this this regional looked like everybody was hitting the ball hard one through nine. Yeah, I think we have a great lineup. I think we have great hitters. It was nice to see them execute and find the success that we've known they could have all season long. So um, we're happy with the spot our lineup is in and hope they can keep it going. How much of that too, especially with George's home run and I think Shelby's home run was to the opposite field. Was there, was there an emphasis on hitting the ball hard the other way? Um, not necessarily. I think just kind of taking what they gave us and, you know, just executing our best swings. That was the whole key. What have y'all seen from Catherine Sandercock um, in the circle and how do y'all plan on going against her in the rest of the Seminole bullpen? Well, she's, she throws hard, throws really good velocity, you know, not something unlike what we've seen. We've seen a lot of good velocity in the SEC. Um, you know, we've seen 70 a few times this year or so, but um, I know she can knock on that door and she throws hard. So she'll definitely be a challenge. And then the challenge is the way they um, match up with multiple pitchers that do different things things. I think that's always a challenge trying to prepare for both directions and uh, two different looks. Coach, what do you remember about that doubleheader in 2018? I know one of the games went 11 innings. Just how long did that day feel? Um, I feel like I remember every bit of it. I feel like I remember every pitch. Um, you know, I think it's one of those things that's still you know, a tough day to handle, a tough day to think about. You think about the things you wish would have gone differently more than the things that went great, unfortunately. But um, there's a couple of moments we'd like to have back and I'm glad we're going to get a shot at it again this weekend. How much does it benefit having a lot of the girls who were there? Amanda Doyle, Shelby Sinceri, Leah Andrews, and I think Taryn Antoine also in the lineup, getting to see them again and just the experience and the nerves of handling a super regional. I think it creates even more emotion than there already is in this weekend, which is an interesting dynamic. You know, um, I think there's already so much on the table this weekend, super regionals, but then you add to it the drama or emotion or whatever you want to call it of playing them three times in their college career for a super regional. It just takes it to a whole 
different level, I think. And I think both teams, you know, we're friends with their coaches. We've known them for a long time. I think all those things are tough emotions to handle when you just repeatedly see them over and over and over again. It magnifies it so much. So I think it'll be interesting how they handle the emotion. The majority of our team has never been to the postseason, been in a regional. They hadn't even been in an SEC series. So uh, that goes out the window for those guys. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like that the messaging that you've been delivering the last couple of weeks has kind of been dialing back the pressure or, you know, trying to minimize the moment so that it doesn't become overwhelming. Is that accurate? I would say yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's really easy to let it snowball on you and let it get too big. And I think that's just the opposite of where we want to be this time of year. I think we've put the work in, you know, it's, it's too late to solve all the world's problems right now before the super regional. So you've got to trust what you've done all season is enough and trust that your process works and, you know, then just go out and try to execute your process and hope that it's enough and hope you've done enough. And I feel confident that our team has. You and Lonnie, obviously, are two of the most successful head coaches that also handle the pitching staff. Take me through that mindset of balancing those two, and what do you see from Lonnie that stands out that makes her so successful on her end? Honestly, I think I'm nothing like her, Um, and I think there's a lot of things she does that I would love to have as a part of my game, but I could never pull it off. I think she's maybe the best communicator in the game. She just has a way about her that she can just say something and people just want to do it for her. Um, She just speaks differently to the players, has this kind of special relationship. Um, I just think the way she communicates and speaks with her players is incredible. Um, And I think all of us should, you know, look to develop that angle that she has, but it is a gift and not everyone has it. I, I think I'm a lot more fundamental, a lot more mechanical, Um, I don't want to say I'm more tactical, but I think I'm a little more on that side of it where she's more of like, just can get them to do it on feel and emotion. And it's a really cool thing that she does. Obviously it's been well known. You've played them a bunch. Do you even go back to previous matchups to pick up anything or is, are you just focus on this year's teams in particular? How do you balance that from a preparation standpoint? I'm going to be honest. I woke up Monday morning and thought to myself, oh, yeah, Sydney, Cheryl, we're doing this. Mason, we do this. I I like it. We played them so much and it's so important this time of year that I woke up already knowing how we had attacked him in the past. Like, I don't know that that's necessarily what we're going to do this year, but I didn't even have to go back and look at what we've done in the past because I already knew that's like how big the super regionals are. And that feel is like, I already knew what we've done. So I, for the most part have just stayed in the present and just tried to see what this season has looked like for them and tried to create a plan based around this season. Shelby has mentioned that her experience pitching at Minnesota, you know, playing at Tallahassee has helped her this year in the postseason. Uh, for the new ones that haven't gone through a super regional, how big was it to have this at home as opposed to on the road where you've had veteran teams in the past win a super regional that can handle that? Whereas this group, hey, you, you know, let's just handle it at home. Yeah, I don't think they have any clue of how nice it is to have it at home, you know, especially the way we drew this Thursday. Friday, Saturday timeline, just not having to pack your stuff and get on the road and getting to just be in your own beds longer, prepare longer, have your field and your stuff longer. I think this short turnaround makes it even more important, but um, they have no idea how important it is, you know, Um, going to the World Series in both ways. Like we we even went on the road regional on the road super and went to, um, you know, the World Series and then we've done it home home in the World Series and you just if you can get to the World Series, the fact that you've been in your own bed for two weeks is a huge difference maker, too. Once you get there, you know, the way if you're on the road for three weeks in a row, it's pretty tough to have your feet under you and really um, hit the ground running once you get to Oklahoma City. This Beth, pat- did I hear you right after the game, too, when you're talking about being at home, you said we get we get what we always wanted. We're home. I saw you walk over to one of your assistants. Did I see that right? Yeah. I mean, I think it is. It's like we were, we're tired of going to Florida state every year. Like we're tired of going there on the road. No offense to them. They earn the right to host. Like I just, we were tired of the committee sending us to Florida state every year. So um, it's nice to get a chance for them to come to our place and, you know, see what we can do here. And I mean, we've beat them at their place and they've beat us at their place. So there's no guarantees because we're at home. We're going to win this thing. That doesn't mean that, but it's nice 
for a change that they have to drive down the road instead of us going there. Coach, um, in baseball, they put out press releases and they say, you know, Landon Marceau pitches Friday, AJ Labus Saturday to be determined on Sunday. Does that, is that what makes your sport a little different? And do you enjoy that aspect of making the decision of who pitches maybe 30 minutes before the game starts? I mean, I guess they do that from a scouting um, purpose in baseball, like for, so that scouts know when their kids pitch. And that's a big part of their game, right? Is they have to let the, um, the professional guys right know when they can come see the pitcher so they can draft them. I don't know why you would play that card though. Like I think about it all the time, like just don't tell them who's going to pitch so they can't sit there and set the machine on 92 with whatever spin rate. I mean, if you have all the numbers they have too on TrackMan and all that stuff, they know the guy's spin rate, velocity, everything. They literally have a machine. They can punch those numbers in. They can practice hitting a curveball at 88 at that spin rate. Why? I don't know why you do it. Shelby says uh, they benefit from it as a staff, not sleeping on it the night before and all that. Is that part of it? No. Not really. Um, not really. I, I, I think that maybe for some that's big. I think some kids would probably benefit from knowing. I think everybody's different, um, but that's just how we do things here. I think um, we're a staff and we're going to put the best person out there for the matchup and I may be doing research on Florida State until what time's the game? Six o'clock until, you know, 515 tomorrow. I might be down to the wire trying to make the best decision and put the best matchup out there. And that's just real. Um, I also think it's just a card we can play. Like I, our two pitchers that have been throwing a lot, our four pitchers are also different. So, um, you know, I'd rather them not have a chance to prepare for exactly what they're seeing. At least there's still some guests left in it that, they can't spend the whole hour hitting a rise ball. They have to spend the hour hitting a drop and a rise. It makes a big difference. It's 50% of the practice time taken away. You talked about the familiarity. Um, do you two kind of have to get out of your head or do you like that preparation? Do you feel that that's what's made you successful to this point? Um, I mean, I think that's why we're good this time of year is that our staff understands how to prepare. Um, I think um, the SEC understands how to prepare a lot. So when you're matched up with another SEC team, that's pretty even. And Florida State is in the ACC. Those guys know how to prepare too. But I think we just do a good job of taking information, translating it for what it means for our team and preparing our team based on the information that we're given. And honestly, I think it's probably my favorite part um, of the game is the prep work. I just, I like the puzzle. I like trying to find the spots where we can attack. It's, it's like the game within the game, you know, like it's the challenge of it is trying to crack the code. I think that's probably my favorite part of the whole thing. And that's, you know, why I love calling pitches, trying to find the weakness and crack the code. Uh, coach, obviously uh, this past weekend, Houston announced their hall of fame class and angel Shamblin. Uh, is going to get inducted. You coached her in Houston. Your reaction to that, and is there any pitchers you've coached at LSU that has similarities to Angel? Like when I see Shelby, I see some Angel in her. Kind of compare some of your the LSU pitchers you've had to a the Angel. Yeah, it makes me super emotional just to think about it and just to think about her whole journey, her career, what it has meant. Um, you know, I think she ended up at Houston because I was really stubborn recruiting her. She had both ACLs, so some people passed on her, but we always believed in her. And wow, what a get that was. It truly helped put the University of Houston on the map. Um, she changed the whole program, the whole culture there. Um, so I'm, I hope to be in attendance when she gets the award because she means that much to me. But um, I do see Shelby Sinceri in her. They both do very similar things. They can throw any pitch at any time in any quadrant. Um, I used to always say that about Angel. It's the same thing I say about Shelby. Um, they both could hit. They both could put their team on their back. Um, they're very similar. But I'm, I'm really proud of Angel. Coach, is there any comparison – to the teams that you played this season, Florida State, you know, reflects that anybody. And then Sandra Cock is a pitcher. And then uh, that obviously you, you can make and make a, any comparison, if any. Hmm. I don't know if we would make a direct comparison. I mean, the teams that we had in last weekend, they all ran quite a bit the same way Florida State runs. Um, we've seen velocity. We've seen Kaylin Arnold when she pitched at Tennessee. We have faced her several times. So the seniors have seen her multiple times. Obviously, we haven't seen her since. Uh, 2019, but we have seen her before. So I think there are some similarities you can draw. I don't know if you'd match them up exactly to one team, complete team. 
And you've also done, you know, mentioned during the season, like, you know, you, you, if it's a matchup with Missouri or whomever, that you have to swing, swing with certain teams. This is, is this a team that you're going to have to pitch with more so? Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Um, I just think this, this time of year, you kind of throw the numbers out the window too. Like, I think there's not, uh, everybody's O and O, everybody's trying to win. We know they're good. We know no matter what the numbers say that the kids can hit on their team. I mean, we know that they're talented. So I think you kind of just throw the numbers out the window and everybody just goes out and competes with everything they've got. And some kids just show up in the postseason. You know, I mean, maybe they didn't have the season they wanted. Georgia Clark probably didn't have the season that she wanted, but then shows up and wins this ball game, biggest game of the year um, on Sunday. And thank goodness we never stopped believing in her, and we always will. She's a great hitter. Um, but I, I think you just never know, and you kind of throw some of the numbers out the window this time of year. What time are y'all practicing today? Two o'clock uh, on the field at two o'clock, I think. And then we go in the cage at three 30. Brandon, do you know right? if the gate's going to be open? If we can shoot? <coughs> it's closed. He says it's closed. It's closed. Okay. What are um, the emotions, you know, behind um, Aaliyah, Amanda's um, final games at Tiger Park coming up? Yeah, I think if we try to think about that, we're, we're going to have way too many emotions involved in it. So, um, you know, I think that that is something that no matter no matter if you're worried about it or you're not, their time is going to end. So I think we just enjoy what we have. Don't worry about it and just hope we can send them out the right way. Good. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the support.